God, hate haters, man. Fucking haters. I kind of love it though. <laughs> you don't have haters. You're I not big. I don't know the saying. <laughs> okay. Well, to me, I'm like, I'm like, when you're like, when you show up in a big way, and also you show up in an authentic way, you're gonna trigger a lot of people. Yeah. And like, I also think I was like born ready to just eviscerate men. <laughs> Jesus, fuck yeah. And like that, like, so Tony was laughing because he's like, oh, you like, you like love this because he's like, you're in this healing space, but like these men who are so triggered by like just you guys just being there. He's like, you kind of like are liking this. I'm like, I kind of do because I'm like, I just think about like how wounded you are. It's it's different. Yeah. It's so like, it's different now, but I'm like, I'm just ev- like, it's eviscerating them in a different way. It's eviscerating them and can just continuing to show up and continuing to be big and continuing to not, not like, give fuck a fuck. you small penis. Well, you get a small dick. Well, I mean- they do. You're doing it in a different way. Yeah. Well, I mean, that one guy, literally, his name was smallest. The, the smallest the, peen you've ever seen with this emoji. <laughs> and I I was just... I'm here for it. Like, I kind of love it because... Wait, let's talk about it. Okay. Welcome back. Yeah. To season three of See You on the Other Side. We have... Well, one, we're so excited to be back. So excited. We have gotten a ton of new listeners, and I am so excited, but we wanted to do kind of another reintroduction episode because season one, we did this, and um, we're in a we, very different place. Yeah, we have evolved so, so much since then. Yeah. When that first episode aired, I had just done my first heroic journey with mushrooms like a month before oh my god yeah because we started I think in April and my first journey was like the first of March yeah and it, what's interesting is like in the beginning you kept saying like I'm a baby in this space I'm, and I was like no you're not and I'm like I was. oh you were I literally was we I both kind of were like I was a toddler <laughs> <laughs> you were newborn <laughs> And you now we're both like walking. teenagers. Yes. That's what it feels like. But I feel like we'll always be like, I feel like you're always kind of a baby in this space. Yeah. Because you're always growing and you're always evolving and you're always learning, whether it's with psychedelics, without psychedelics, just in the healing and in, in general. Right. It's never linear. Right. So it's like we may be a teenager, but then we may we may revert back. Revert back. <laughs> to middle school right. and then jump ahead to a young adult and then go back to being a little toddler. I fucking love that. I do too. I love that. I do too. That's that's what the, this is all about. And it's yeah. giving you yourself grace when you do revert back. Yeah. And yeah. being okay with that and knowing yes. that that's perfectly normal. Yes. But listening to some or listening to those first episodes, we, we talked about this. It's cringy. Privately, it's so cringy. It's cringy. And those things, they were the truth. But I think the thing that for me, it's not cringy because it's just where I was. Right. And it was where you were. But I think maybe what feels a little bit cringy now is I feel like I'm less in a victim. 100%. State. Yes. You know, you're more empowered. Yeah, those things did happen. To you're me. also and more in your feminine. Yes, those <laughs> things did impact me greatly. Right, most of my life, I just I've really done a lot of work to heal from those things. So, so, so to go back and to you know, most people don't get to listen to themselves. Yeah. From, a couple years ago well that's what facebook statuses are for <laughs> which those are fucking those are fucking cringy yeah it's like 15 years ago christine posted christine is fucked up at the bar it's like <laughs> awesome status christine leah is really craving mac and cheese <laughs> i swear to god that was one of them that popped up recently 
I was pregnant, I think. Because <laughs> it yeah, was like, always what? like, Leah, Leah is, Christine, Christine is. is. Yeah. Jinx. Yeah. Speaking of, like, I feel like I did this with a podcast years ago where I could never tell who was who in the podcast. Like, I knew their names, the the co-hosts, but, like, oh, if you yeah. showed me a picture of the two, I was like, I don't fucking know. Well, and people think that we're the same person or we're sisters or we're, we're different twins. different races. <laughs> like, we are two completely different races, but we hear that All the time. often. But yeah. I'm Leah. Hi. And I'm Christine. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so Leah is the golden retriever of the pair. Mm-hmm. And More in my feminine. Yes. And when you were wounded, you were a wounded feminine. Mm hmm. I am more of the feral cat. Um, well, and I should backtrack because <laughs> you were you're you're the golden retriever who's be, like finding her voice. Yeah. And I am the feral cat who's been finding her softness. Yes. I'm turning into a German shepherd, though. <laughs> I am turning into. Hmm. Not a feral cat. Maybe a pit bull. Like, pit bulls are so sweet, but oh, I also... I thinking more like cats still. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know enough about cats. A so. Siamese cat. Okay, sure. Whatever they talk the f- a lot. Okay, whatever the fuck that They're means. very vocal. Okay. Okay, great, great. great. But also still cat energy. But did you did you cringe listening to that? I did. But, okay. And, and I can agree with you in the same sense. So, like, you know, to our new listeners, if you are tuning in now... Great. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. (laughs) If you started at the beginning, which is like what I think a lot of people do, or at least the first few episodes where we're introducing ourselves, um, it's interesting because from what you were saying, like I was, I was still, I was healing. I was in this space. Um, I hadn't reconnected with my mom. I was still very wounded from my relationship with my mom, had gone no, no contact for 10, 11 years. And to see where we are now is very Mm -hmm. um a completely different version and i didn't realize it at the time but as we've evolved and interviewed more and more people and talked to more and more people in this space we've learned so fucking much about the wounded feminine the wounded masculine um the mother wounds the um the heroine's journey which is literally what i was going through so if you look at the heroine's journey compared to the hero's journey, there's like a separation from the feminine. And then there's a like fixing that. Yeah. And that's where I am. Yeah. Like I've reconnected with the, with the feminine in my life that wounded me and made me who I was. Right. So it's just an interesting concept. And I think you're there too in a different way. Like you're reconnecting with your feminine because you were so deep in my masculine. Yeah. Oh Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think people know what that means, but I I think we should do an episode on that where it doesn't sound so because the thing has is has nothing is, to do with gender. Right. And and <clears throat> men and women, they will have both. It's a healthy balance of both. Um speaking of that healthy balance. We were talking when we first came on about some of the haters that we've had. <laughs> I love that. That was a perfect segue (laughs) into that. So good. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a TikTok that went, I don't, semi-viral and thousands of comments. Out of the thousands of comments, there were a handful of haters Mm. and they were 99.9% men who were also in this space, in this space. Which I find to be very interesting. Oh my because God. Because one, like, isn't there room for all of us? I also think that um, we get judged by the way that we look. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, we just got this, the comment, like, we're just like some basic white bitches <laughs> who are in this space and... Um, Ruining it for everybody. But again, it goes with like, in so many things, you're expected to fit in a box. You're expected to look a certain way. You're expected to act a certain way. And, you know, seeing that in this space where it's like, oh, you don't look the part. You're a woman. You're this. You're that. I'm like, damn, 
you're being, it's to me, it's very hypocritical right. to the whole point of being in this space. Well, one of them said, um, and the reason I'm like relating this back to it, because the, the, the men and not all men, I, I realized that like there were, right, right. you know, Eric came to our defense from sanctuary, but like yeah. there were some men who were very, their masculine is so wounded. Yes. They cannot see like an empowered woman and feel and feel good about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, just some of the comments that we got, one of them was, um, um, you, you're probably trust fund babies. You've never struggled a day in your life, which is the funniest, <laughs> but so funny. Cause it's not true. It's the furthest from the truth. You like have- I was like, I didn't grow up middle class. I grow up, I grew up like poor, poor getting kicked out of trailers, government housing, I mean, you grew up single mom yeah, and with six children. And also from a, I was born in a country that was, there's a lot of poverty. So I'm like, that's funny. That's so funny. Um, But also like, even if we were fed from a silver spoon, like to think that we didn't grow up with, with childhood trauma or adversity or wounds, like is such a, like, I, I hate that. But it's the judgment of what we look like. Yeah. It's, 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 this is how you look. So you've probably never been through anything hard. And it's like, wow, what a vapid thought. So deep. Yeah. So you really thought hard on that one. Right. Right. You, yeah. You pegged me. You got me. Um, yeah. Basic white bitches, um, which that's funny too. The one that was my favorite was the one talking about us like being overweight and old. <laughs> and I'm like, and you should get more Botox. <laughs> and this is a dude who like sells psychedelic oh, shit on an God. Etsy platform. Like, and he's all like, it should be about, you're not, you're making fun of healing and it should be love. And you know, he was like going deep and we were like, right. we know, right. We're not, Shit, shit. I mean, I don't know. It was just wild. Yeah. So, yeah, my whole point was just, like, the amount of hate that we get seems to be from men. Yeah. Which. But to me, all it (laughs) says is, all it says is, well, I guess there's a real need for us to be here. 100%. And there's a real need for other women. 100%. To be here. Because this is some, like, if this is how you're going to treat us just because we're in this space, whoo! Right. You got some work to do still, which we do too. Right. But, but we're we, not saying we don't. Right. We fucking own that. No. The thing that was like wild to me is like how much support we got from the women. And that's exactly what I'm like, what you're saying. It's like, it just goes to show how needed this is for women in general. Like and, we deserve yeah. to heal. We deserve to be empowered in ourselves. Yeah. And if that's triggering to the men in your life to to find your voice and to be empowered and to be yourself, yeah, they got to go. Right. Well, and I want to add to that because I have um, been getting some hate from uh, like people that I grew up with. Oh. And you know, comments like kind of like, who does she think she is? What problems did she ever have? She was popular just, and also just, just gossip. Yeah. And, um, small towns just, yeah. You know how the small towns be doing it. I do know how that works. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But again, it's, it's just like the more that we're in this space and the longer that we're in this space, it just continues to confirm like, I'm supposed to continue to talk about my experiences and continue to talk like like it's like confirmation that you're in the right place. Yeah. My ancestors told me to. So (laughs) I'm going to listen. They told me in a mushroom journey. Keep talking. Keep sharing your voice and share the things that we didn't get to share. And we realized the irony of that making it sound (laughs) even fucking weirder. And guess what? I don't, don't give a care. fuck. <laughs> don't care. I don't give a fuck. But also, you wish you could talk to your ancestor. Right? Yeah, you wish. <laughs> Fucking jealous, bro. <laughs> but 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 I think when especially women show up big and show up as their authentic selves, 
it is it can be very triggering to a lot of people yes to men on the internet and whatever and men in this psychedelic space but to people who who knew you who knew past versions of you um who don't think that you deserve to share your story and share your truth and yeah it it's just triggering for exactly what you said but for the women that it triggers it's triggering the women who have not found their voice yet yeah or who think that it's not polite to speak out or yeah. who don't stand up for themselves yeah and a lot of a lot of wounded women <laughs> don't like women being other women being big yeah and i i hate i hate that and i wish it was different and hopefully you know the more women that heal the less of a problem that will be but yeah it is what it is but what's funny is like the more hate that we've gotten the more it validates me and us and what, what we're, we're doing, doing. yeah i'm like i'm like stay pressed yo i guess <laughs> i don't know well, but but keep listening cuz you're helping well it's interesting cuz we would get like a negative comment every now and then and i would say something to my husband and he'd be like i don't know why you guys let it bother you and we're like we don't yeah. But we're going to speak about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I am losing zero sleep over right. this, but I enjoy, like, calling them out. When you texted me yesterday, that comment, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. Well, because it was in our approved. Oh, okay. And okay. You gotcha. I had to approve it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But when you, so, and I approved it. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the other thing. We proof it. Like, I'm not hiding <laughs> you. Yeah. But when you sent it to me, I, I, literally responded back in all caps lol lol, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> right I'm like, because i'm like yeah because again those people who are making judgments or you know gossiping or whatever they don't even know us so why would i take what they say and internalize that as truth i think if it's it was just words right and i was just like if it was bothering me i would be like why did he say that why do you think he's saying that and, and i would and like old you it would have really bothered 100 percent. the first time we ever got something negative it did yes it, it really did yeah but i was gonna say this is why i'm like not all men um there was someone who said oh, you guys jumped on the bandwagon and da 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 And we had, like, a dialogue between him. Yeah. And at one point, he, like, apologized and was like, I guess I need – I have some work to do. Yeah, I need – I don't know why that triggered me so much. But I'm. But to that point, I want to be like, well, unless you were born into this, didn't you jump on a bandwagon too? Right. Like, isn't this what this wave is? Like, right. this psychedelic renaissance wave? Like, people right. are just now waking up to it. So, right. like, we, we didn't jump on a bandwagon to make to be cool. Like, we were in it before it was big. Well, and also, we didn't jump on a bandwagon to be cool. We did this because we were suffering and it helped save our life. Exactly. So, however you want to spin it. Right spin it that way but it, it's something that really changed the trajectory of our lives personally our relationships how we parented mm -hmm. um our friendships everything so if that's a bandwagon all right cool i'll fucking jump in i'm leading it yeah I'm, like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah I, I i think that there needs to be more love that's so fucking what i hate to no say. i i hear what you're saying though because it's like if if the bandwagon we jumped on put us in a position where we were brave enough to speak on it publicly and other women are getting what they need mm -hmm. from us speaking about it, yeah. that's a bandwagon I am happy to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, yes, we have gotten hate. We've lost friendships um we've gotten judgments where you know i think about the message that um that woman sent where she's like when you guys started your podcast and started <laughs> your content i was like oh god it's just these two moms who are just talking about how they do drugs i know exactly who you're but talking then about she backtracked and what did she say like she she listened to us and she did her own research and she was like oh and then she's like sending it to her friends and she she was like a friend of mine from before who's also in this space now, which I fucking love. Right. Um, maybe love one that. day she'll, I'll ask her, I'll, I'll read the message that she sent to us originally because she was just like, Leah, I just, I thought you were like 
doing drugs and just talking about it. And but I was I worried love, about you. I, I love the ownership of that. Yeah. I love the ownership I was wrong. of that. Like I was wrong. Cause I used to be that person too. Like if you, if I wasn't in this space, I take that back because you did talk about cannabis in a podcast before. And I was like, Oh cool. Yeah. But that's different because the way that we talk about it is to educate and inform. Right. We're not like we got so fucked up. Yeah. But yeah. I, right. But I used to be a hater with all of this stuff. Yeah. And so I get, I totally get it. The judgment. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, as, as much hate as we've gotten, it's again, it's reaffirming because with that also comes people who see us, who see themselves in us, who relate to us, who we just got a message the other day, who someone who, um, was suicidal. Oh yeah. And, she listened to our podcast and it gave her hope. So it's like, if we get hate, but then we get a message like that, or we build connections like that, pff, keep, keep hating. hating. <laughs> like, keep hating. Well, and also if you keep listening, you're not really a hater. You're kind of a fan. <laughs> I'm just saying, like if you keep watching our shit and you keep like trolling it, but whatever, mm -hmm. I hate to break it to you, but you're actually helping us. You're helping the algorithm, bro. So, yeah. And also our listener content and. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, so I also. So this is an episode to reintroduce us, ourselves and why. Um, first off, we've taken a very long hibernation break. OK. That's this yep. is the thing I was going to okay. say. Like, okay. I was wondering. I want to bring it up to yeah. you. Um, Which I loved, by the way fucking loved and it it's nothing, i took it so fucking serious it's nothing against our listeners or anything it's just you're a manifester i'm a projector we need lots of downtime we need rest it's so. gonna be hard getting back into the swing of things but i'm excited i am too um but a friend of mine yesterday sent me or she sent it this morning it was a tiktok and it was talking about we had a girls weekend at one point there was an idea being thrown around to do vision boards and I was like, you know, like I've looked into that and everybody does them at the beginning of the year, but it's really supposed to be like in the spring because that's about new life, new beginnings. Um, uh, that's when like the animals start mating and the grass starts growing and everything's Flowers all right. Start and we're supposed to be hibernating right now, still, right yeah. now. Um, and if you go with like, I don't know what the word is, but like there's some like cycle that you follow, this flow that you follow. Um, Jenny Shanks was talking about it with us. Oh, okay. Okay. But I can't remember the name of it. I don't know. Ugh. But you're supposed know. to do things in this like cyclical version, like summer, spring, winter, fall. And also like throughout the day, like you're supposed to hibernate. And I, anyway, um, uh, the TikTok was like, the spring equinox is when it's new beginnings. Like that's when you're supposed to create vision boards, set intentions. Like nobody's supposed to be going to the gym on January 1st because it's the start of a new year. Like you're supposed to still be in hibernation mode. Like you're supposed to come out when it's time. Yeah. So now I'm like, all right, spring I'm totally equinox, on that. March 19th. It's a Tuesday. Vision boards. Let's do it. High five. Boom. That was my F5. <laughs> I'm so down. Okay. We're, we're going to have 19. a big year this year. We're going to have a really big year. But see, between season one and season two, we did not take a break. No. And we really um, suffered because of it. So yeah. it's something that it's just going to be. We're going to do this every year. Yeah. Yeah. So November to March. Yeah. Felt good. Yes. Um. So speaking of all of that, let's talk about. Let's let's reintroduce ourselves in a way for our listeners to see the trajectory that we see. Okay. When we started this, we got pegged as the girls who do mushrooms. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. The girls who talk about psychedelics. Mm -hmm. And we owned it. We're like, fuck yeah, we do. We talk about this shit all day long. <laughs> Make you super uncomfy. But... We had someone that we reached out to to be a guest and it kind of got this ball rolling and like this thought process for me rolling where she was like, you know, I love what you guys do. I just I can't come on the podcast because I have a lot of listeners and a lot of community who maybe wouldn't be as open to that and I would lose so many followers. And I was like, oh, my God, 
but like, that's not what we wanted to talk to you about, you know? And, but I looked at our page and I was like, I can see how someone would think that. Sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We post a lot of content about psychedelics. We're like, literally there was like a mushroom emoji in our bio. Like, and you know, I responded back and I was like, I completely respect and understand that. Um, but we're so much more than that. We've had so many guests on who we don't talk about psychedelics at all with, who have never touched them. And I realize that's the name that we've given ourselves and I want to take it back. Well, and I think that that's the name we gave ourselves because that's what we both first did to really catapult into this space, one. That was our catalyst. And two, that was what resonated uh, with us when we started this podcast. Yes. But as we've like evolved with this podcast, we, we say that every every interview feels like integration. integration. Yeah. So we've had people of all backgrounds come on to share their expertise, share their stories, whatever. And it's opened our eyes to a lot of different healing modalities. And right. so like, I think that it's great that we started with that because that's what resonated with us. But also, I also think it's great because the listeners are watching us also evolve and also learn and new, like do new things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, example, season two, we interviewed, was it season two or season one? We interviewed Jenny Shanks. She's two. a medium. Season two. She's a medium. Never had been to a medium before. And we interviewed her and I was like, wow, she's, she's great. So then I saw her for myself and I reconnected with my dad. The anger that I had for my dad is now more love for my dad and empathy and, and, empathy and compassion um, and more um, love for my culture. So there are so many different modalities that we've learned about and then we've gone and done. Right. And so, yes, mushrooms are great. Yes, MDMA is great, but... Fuck yes, psychedelics. Yes, Woo-woo. yes, fuck yes, psychedelics. They will always be a part of our healing. Always. Like, yeah, every year I'm probably going to do... A mushroom. A, a mushroom journey. I was going to say, too, like, that will always be my home. Sa- yes, same, same. But I also do breath work. Mm-hmm. I also see a medium. Mm-hmm. I also do energy healing. I also do embodiment work. Like... We do somatic also, work. Yeah. Go to a therapist when I need to. There's there's so many things. I journal. Um, there are so many things that we do now. So, yes, that is a part of us. Right. But also there's a lot to us. We've been called like, oh, you guys are like the moms who do mushrooms. We're like, that's a totally different platform, which, by the way, we will have them on. Yes. <laughs> We've been talking with yes. the moms on mushrooms. But that's what they talk about. That's what they do. We're, we're, I don't, I hate saying we're bigger than that. We're more than that. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. We're much more than that. We've turned, we've morphed into so much more. And we are both three fives. So we are both as a three in human design. We are meant to experiment. Right. And so what we're doing with this podcast is you are watching us experiment with different modalities. And if there's one that resonates with you, amazing. And if it we want you to, yeah, we want you to go down that road if that's what resonates with you. Right. But if it doesn't, amazing. Also, because there are other things that we're going to talk about. We've done things that don't resonate with us. Yes, we have. <laughs> We have done things where we're like, Fuck never that doing was, that again. That was not our medicine. <laughs> right. But and others are like, I do it every day. I fucking love it. And we're yeah. like, mm, OK. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so to anybody who's like also new and doesn't understand what human design is, that was like another modality that like we've really fu- I have really fucking dove into and really tried to understand myself yeah. and the people around me. Yep. And it's helped so much. But if you are unfamiliar with human design, highly suggest looking into what you are. Um, but yeah, we're our profile types are are three and five, which is the experimenter and the martyr, the liberator, the person. So we who are supposed meant to speak. So can I go on a little side tangent with that? Yeah, I sure. was on Reddit the other day, and somebody and on Human Design Reddit. 
And um, somebody was talking about, you know, being a three five and how um, daunting that sounds because they were I think they were in an unhealed place because they were like, so my life is literally just meant to be failure after failure after failure. Like, when does that get better? I hate this. And I almost responded, but I was like, I'm going to have to put so much thought into this response. (laughs) But we have turned our three, five human design parts, the failure after failure after failure into okay, now I'm going to choose what to experiment with and I'm going to stick with what I love and I'm going to share my experience. So even if it doesn't resonate with me, it might resonate with you and you get to try it. Mm-hmm. So it's, to me, it's not about, I think the first part of my life was failure after failure after failure and experimenting and not finding anything. And now I, I'm empowered by it. So now I'm like, yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Why not? If it doesn't work, doesn't work. Not why not? You You know, and our listeners know, I go down some motherfucking rabbit holes so deep that sometimes I have a hard time coming out of them. (laughs) It's like my ADD, like super hyper-focused on this one thing and then I'm stuck on it. But um, we do our research. We talk to the professionals about it and then we're like, huh, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think about, I think it was our like third or fourth episode We had this um, woman on named Molly and she was talking about astral projection. And if you go back to that interview, again, I'm, I'm so green in this space. I had done one journey. I'm just a baby. Yeah. I think I was like two months in or whatever. And Leah and Molly are talking so just nonchalantly about astral projection. (laughs) And if you go back to the interview, you should see my eyes. Cause I was like, first off, what the fuck is astral projection? And like I'm just like I think we have a clip of you literally like mouthing what the fuck (laughs) and we're just talking about it like oh really where'd you go right right. what'd you see and I didn't know I didn't know what the fuck that meant but now I do breath work (laughs) you've done it and guess what I do during breath work sometimes I astral project (laughs) where are you going I know what are you doing yeah I'm just hanging out (laughs) in the cosmos yeah (laughs) That's what I said to her too. I, I think I said that. I was like, I didn't go anywhere. I think I, I was yeah. just like in out yeah. in nothing. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was judging. It was just very new information yeah. that I didn't know what it meant. Um, but again, there was an openness to it. Yeah. An openness to learning it. And now I've I've done it and, and experimented and and it's like, oh shit, I just astral projected. That's fucking crazy. Um, but but it's because we have this curiosity to us yeah and this openness to try new things well that's literally our fucking tagline like yeah be open be curious stay open be curious you know that's huge yeah just be open to what we're talking about yeah and it doesn't have to resonate with you no and not everything will no yeah but if it does listen to your body listen to your gut your yeah. intuition. Yeah. Anything to add to that? No, I think that's... I just want to be known as something different than the girls who do mushrooms. I'll wear that badge. Like, you know, it's great. Yeah. I just... I do know an obscene amount of shit about mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, you do. You really but do. But I know so much more, too. Yeah. Yeah. We do. I just, I just, I guess I just don't want to be seen as people who are like put in this box. Yeah. Because we're always going to change. Isn't that the point? Right. Um, You know, who knows? Maybe two years from, this is not going to be true, but two years from now, maybe we're like, yeah, mushrooms really aren't our thing because we found this. Like we're going to keep evolving and keep changing. So. Yeah. I think some of those older episodes to us are a little like, because we have changed a lot Mm -hmm. and we have become more empowered. And yeah, I think it's cool, though, for the people who have been with us since the beginning to like watch. I know. I just cried so much in that first episode. I was still so really so it was still very fresh and I was still very wounded by it. And I cry in every episode, I feel like. Yeah, you do. 
<laughs> like it, I think it's like turned into a joke. Yeah, for no, a lot it of has. people, it has. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it has. We talk for about it all sure. the time. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah, but I think mine that episode it was just coming from still a little bit of a wounded place. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and that's okay too. I'm just thinking to myself, and we don't we don't have to go into it. Like just how much has changed since the, in your life since then. Mine too. It's Absolutely. just it's just. It's just crazy to think about. And and I'm like, oh, my God, that was only two years ago. Yeah. Only two years ago. Yeah. A big a big, journey's been wild. A big comment that we get is people are say, I want I want friends like that. Or I wish I had somebody like that where I could be on the healing journey with. And so I just want to say to you, Leah, like what a beautiful place to be in to have a friend to do this with. Like that's really, it really is so special because a lot of people don't have that and you didn't have that when you first started and I did because I had you. And so I feel very grateful because a lot of people, they don't have their partner. They don't have a friend that, you know, sees them in that way. And I, I just feel very blessed that I've had you the entire time. (laughs) So we've, okay. Can I add to that? Yeah. Don't cry. I'm going to really <laughs> try hard not to. <laughs> you know, we have had a lot of, uh, we've had some bonding experiences like this break that, that were necessary and needed. And I really, truly value our friendship so much and too. what we're doing in this space so much. But to add to that, and this is going to sound crazy, I feel like I did lose a lot of friendships, and and same with you. Mm-hmm. It has started, and I think a lot of people are like, but think people that are, it's not going to happen to and, them. But some people are coming back. That's literally where I was going. Okay, like, okay. That's where okay. I was going. Like, I have felt more supported by people closer to me, and it's like made room for better friendships mm. and and the people that I have in my life in my very small circle are there for a reason and um my my best friend Sarah says this and I fucking love it she was like we just we learned to speak the same language and that's what it's starting to feel like is I have very few people in my circle now but we're starting to speak the same language and I think that that's a beautiful thing and then, yeah, what you were saying, like where I once felt disconnected, I'm feeling more connected. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also in this space. So it kind of it kind of helps. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bonus it's yeah. plus. Um, and so to anybody who is, I think, newer in this healing journey and feeling like you're losing support, losing friendships, I think um, we can both say like it gets better. It does get better. It may get rough for a little while. It gets rough. It, it, it you know, it can be really hurtful t- when people don't see you. And or, lonely. Yes. Or you feel like people are judging you um, or they're not supportive. Um, but, you know, it sounds so cliche, but when one door closes, another one opens. Yeah. And so even though there are people where I'm like, oh, I just really like you don't see me in the way that I need you to see me and we don't really align and that's okay. There doesn't, there also doesn't have to be beef with that. No. Because we're always changing and evolving and sometimes we change in the same direction and sometimes we don't. Um, But when, truly when one door closes, another one opens. So it's like, yeah, I've lost things, but I've also gained things that were more aligned with me. So keep, keep that in mind. And, and we have really, um, thought about those comments a lot and want to do something with that and hopefully we we do that down the road um, to you know continue to build this community and get people who are like-minded to connect with us because yeah. I, I do think like yes like you know Jason your husband is great Tony my fiance is great but it's it's also really nice to have those those friendships and those soul sisters or soul brothers that see you yeah it's really important and and so i like how you said that 
So important. Over- important. <laughs> I so say important. some things weird. I, I, I said I liked how you said it. <laughs> okay. I do though. I do though. I say um, some things weird. But you're exactly right. Like it's it's just this feeling of community, even when it's not your like circle of normal friends. Yeah. Like feeling supported in community is one of the biggest things. Yeah. And necessary. Yeah. And we have some like really amazing acquaintances too yeah like just, i guess that's the thing like they're not necessarily our best friends but there's there's support still there and people you know who still see you from from a, a distance or it's that part's been amazing as well i still need to learn how to navigate those because you know those are the ones like i don't see you but like every now and then we'll text or you know i'd love to meet up for coffee every now and then but we we don't hang out Like, I'm still learning how to navigate those friendships because I value them. I do feel very seen in those those friendships. But but I would say they're more than acquaintances. But I don't know what to call. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, in my head, I'm thinking of like several of them where I'm like, I love this person. I could go have coffee with them and spend three hours and then not see him for a few months and then not even communicate for months. And go right back to it the next time I see them or run into them. So support doesn't always have to be like, we talk every day. And it's, it's, I've found so much support in those types of friendships and value them so much. Yeah. So quality over quantity. hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So in the world of reintroducing ourselves, um, I also think we should um, shout out to colors. (laughs) <laughs> do you want to take one um oh yeah shit yeah okay. the tall bottle okay this episode is brought to you by colors <laughs> you guys we have our first sponsorship and that's really exciting for us yeah okay i'm gonna take one yeah those are just the microdoses. okay i just want this is it. um these are Amanita muscaria, um, which is what people call like the uh, the Christmas mushroom, like the Mario mushroom. It's like the one that's red with white spots on the top. I love Amanita. Um, It I have because that has learning about it really was like mind blowing for me. And we we are gonna have them on soon. So yeah, to talk about this. This is just a microdose though, but um, we're working with colors now. The link is in our bio. With a discount code, if you guys want to. Let's just start with they taste amazing because you're eating a gummy. I would be very careful, though. Yes. Trying to microdose. Yes. One is good for me. I also love how they have like dosing guidelines on the back. Yes. So it makes it super easy. But um, I think the way that we started working with them was beautiful. Oh, share that. I came across this site and we've been like, we have brands like send us stuff all the time. And they're more about like, fuck yeah, mushrooms, let's get fucked up. (laughs) And we're like, I mean, that's great, but we do more than that. Yeah. There's a difference. Um, And then I come across this brand, their page, and I'm like, I send it to you immediately. And I'm like, holy shit, like their branding is on point. Yeah. They're like, they're so pretty. Yes. (laughs) They're so pretty. (laughs) And then I was like, what if we can work with them? Well, also what you liked about them was how educational they were. They were super educational. They they speak on harm reduction the same way that we do. Yes. And they take this serious. It's not just about getting fucked up and having fun on mushrooms, which is, I think, the thing that was missing in all of those other brands that we were looking into. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. And then... They fucking reached out to us. Yeah, you manifested that shit. I totally fucking did. And yeah, they you're were like, like, what if they reach out? And then they reached out. And then they reached out. And they were like, we love what you guys are doing. We love how educational you are. We love what you guys speak on. Um, would you be open to talking to us further? And we're like, shut Fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so that's our story. It was like a beautiful little, I don't even know, like not a coincidence. It was the universe like nudging us. Yeah. Yeah. And but, we but fucking what, love them. But what I like about that too is 
we really took our time. We didn't want to just be go with a brand because that was the first person that asked us. We needed to make sure that we aligned. Yes. And it took us some time because we wanted years. It it did. It took us two years because we wanted to do it right. And we wanted to do it with something that felt right. Yeah. And with a company that felt right. And so we feel that with colors. They're great. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So we'll have them on hopefully soon so they can talk about some of their other products oh, because they def- kind of blew our minds definitely soon because they have a lot to say and they're going to say it in a lot better way than we are right because they they know <laughs> they know way more. <laughs> they know their shit um okay that's all i got oh can you share about like if people want to write in yes okay one of the things that we were thinking about doing last year um and we did a little bit was trip reports Um, and as much as you guys love those and, and it is so hard for us to fit them into our schedule because we have a list of guests that we book months out, um, and finding the time for the two of us to add another day of recording, um, it's a lot. And so we've thought about doing this in other ways. I was like, I mean, maybe I could do it in my free time, but then I would feel weird because you're not there. And, right. um, but we do enjoy these stories of healing and the different modalities. And I don't even like, it doesn't even have to be like trip reports. No, it doesn't. Cause now like it can be, more we're than opening the door to, yeah. it's just a piece of your journey that you, um, would love to share. And when I say this, I'm saying like it, you have to, sh- you have to have somehow found a way to the other side of it, but we want to hear from you because I think a really cool thing is that we start sharing them at the end of our episodes. Like, so email us, I mean, what would you say? A couple of paragraphs, like try to keep it short. Yeah. Cause if it's something that we're going to share on the podcast, it can't be an hour long. Yeah. Yeah. It's terribly long. So try to keep it short. If you're good with writing, um, keep it under a couple of paragraphs. I don't know, like maybe three or four paragraphs if they're not too yeah. long of a story. Yeah. Um, you know, who, what, when, where, what you did, the lesson that you learned. We want to start sharing those because there are so many of you guys out there who have such amazing stories to tell and we want to give you a place to share them. We just don't have the time. Mm-hmm. So maybe that can evolve into something different down yeah. the lo- down the road. But for now, email us. What's our email address, Christine? Um, see you on the other side podcast at gmail.com. Okay. She, I will be, yeah, I will be the one getting the email. Um, Leah does not check them. No, no. We need a <laughs> we have, generator for have, that show. Yeah, we have different roles. <laughs> we do. We need a generator. Let's we put that out there generator. too. We would love to have a generator who can help us do, do, do who also understands what we're doing. Yes, because we're not the doers. We're not the doers. We're the, we're the talent. (laughs) Oh, shit. It's true, though. (laughs) I don't want to do. I just want to be here and talk. I just want to be here and talk and talk to other people. Um, Okay, so yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Yep. And we have some really great interviews coming for you guys in season three and hopefully some new um, experiences. I mean, not hopefully, like that's fucking what we do. It's literally it's yeah. what we do. So we're going to manifest that shit hard because we, we have some big things we want to do. Um, and so anything else you want to add? That's it. All right. That's we've all missed you guys. Yes, we have. We've missed you guys. I tried to switch up the seating arrangement a little bit. <laughs> So I can be like, it's different, but the same. (laughs) Um, And we'll talk to you guys soon. So stay open. Be curious. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Bye.